What's up, you freaking turds? It is Mystery Man with my buddy Steve. What's up? We are uh, going to try a podcast and see how you guys like it. So this is the first edition of the Mystery Man podcast. Um, kind of off topic, we'll, we'll mainly talk about gaming stuff, but whatever comes to mind we'll talk about too. Um, 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 I gotta stop saying um, that's, uh, something someone told me that I say um too much, but, uh, let's get this going. So, how have you been, Steve? Pretty good. A little bit sleepy, but I'm good. Sleepy, yeah. It's hard to work a full-time job, do this as a hobby. Me, I have a... I have a kid that takes up a lot of my time. Um, So hopefully, like I've said before, I wish you guys would make me popular enough so I could get that ad revenue and maybe do this for a living. (laughs) Uh, But that's beside the point. So uh, I didn't mention this in our unboxing video. Uh, I picked up Fallout 76. For $40 at GameStop. I don't know why I didn't include that in that video. But Steve and I both have it for the PlayStation 4. He got a little bit before me. Uh, we both tried it out. We played it a little bit today, actually. And what what are your thoughts on it, Steve? What do you think? Well, to be honest, I like the game. It's like uh, how it was anticipated to be. It's Fallout 4 with the ability for co-op and online. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I was... It's it's basically what I was expecting. Now, I do see why people are upset about it, uh, how buggy it is, and how broken it was on launch. I mean... I mean, for Christ's sake, it had a, uh, I believe the day one patch for the game, was, the file size was bigger than the game itself. So, I, I mean, I get it. But, I mean, for $40, which is what I picked it up for, I mean, I'm only what? I think I'm level 9, almost level 10, and I'm I'm still enjoying it. If If there's no NPCs, but... And that's another thing people kept bitching about, but, I mean, you're the first people out of the vault. I mean, you are the ones to rebuild society, so, to me, it kind of makes sense why there's no NPCs. So, if you are playing by yourself, I understand why it maybe seems stale and boring, but if you have other people to play with, it's actually a good time. Well, on that by yourself part, I actually explore a lot, so it's not really boring to me. But I do run into a lot of high-level characters that I can't handle on my own, and I end up getting out of there before I die. Yeah, and I've I was noticing that too, to where I was playing by myself, and I got to a point where. Which this is just beginning quests, quests at the very be beginning of the game that I was doing I got uh, to an enemy where I was level 6 or 7 and it was a level 14 where I had to really really kite this enemy and I had to sneak and remain hidden and get my sneak attack bonuses just to kill it and I can see why that is because they're really pushing you to have people to play with this wasn't meant to play by yourself but it is an option. Yeah, you you can always do it. And if you stack your character in certain traits and perks and abilities, I think you can. Because, like, for example, I think this was back on Fallout 3. I put everything into agility. So my yeah, sneak me too. <laughs> was absolutely the highest. My vats yep. and vats regeneration was always maxed out. Uh, they had a perk... Oh, I think it was called Grim Reaper's Sprint, where when you get into an encounter, 
if you kill an enemy while in vats, it regenerates your AP to full. Oh, so yeah. I could just walk into a whole slew of enemies and just take them all out without getting damaged because I stayed in vats pretty much the entire time. You know what I think? Uh, back to the talk about people bitching about 76. I think that if they had New Vegas as online, people wouldn't be bitching because there's going to be NPCs all over the place. Yeah. Well, and I mean, before the podcast, we were talking about this too. Like, when ESO, Elder Scrolls Online, when it finally hit consoles, I I think it was out for a while on PC before, wasn't it? Uh, I don't remember off the top of my head. I believe it was, and when it finally hit consoles, everybody, most, I mean, a lot of people played Morrowind and Oblivion, but what really drew in the casual gamers was Skyrim. That's when everybody and their brother was playing an Elder Scrolls game. And then ESO came out, and everybody was was expecting, oh, it's like Skyrim with your friends, but then it launched, and it was... An MMO, yeah, you know. a full-fledged one with uh, micro-purchases, uh, pay-to-win, you know, the, the whole shenanigans. And on top of that, I mean, you're, you look at, look at it, for example, graphically, it, and how combat worked, it worked like a traditional MMO, and everybody bashed the ever-living shit out of it, and you... You had to look at it for what it was. I enjoyed playing it because I like MMOs. And yep. other people were like, well, this isn't Skyrim with my buddies. And then when they made make Fallout 76, people are bitching about Fallout 76. But it is exactly what people were looking for in ESO who weren't educated on what it actually was. And they're actually getting it with Fallout 76. And, like, if somebody took Fallout 4 on PC and made a mod where you could play it co-op with other players and be in the same map, everybody would be like, this is the best mod anybody ever made. I wish Bethesda would have done this. And now Bethesda has actually done this with a game. And since they were the ones to do it when it has some problems people I think overreact. So I, I think yep. for forty bucks it was a good buy and I'm I'm gonna sink some hours into it. Now I, I paid the full price but then again I pre ordered it before you know anyone complained about it. Um I I pre ordered it uh three days before the game actually came out and uh by that time the beta was closed so I could not play. But uh one thing I was really disappointed about was uh, the fact that uh, I heard a rumor that the beta testers got to keep their level and stuff. Uh, oh, and yeah. did, is that true? Did they get to I, keep I it? Didn't, I did not follow up on that rumor, but I remember as soon as I got in-game, because I got in-game right as it rolled out from uh, uh, beta, mm-hmm. and there was a level 19, I was like, I've only been playing 10 minutes. There's no way he's level 19 in 10 minutes. So, so that's possible that they did get to keep their level. Or or different areas. Time zone, yeah, difference yeah, time zone difference, too. Because if you, if you grind, you could hit level 19 fairly yeah, quick. Like you, so, you got to almost my level in just two hours, and uh, I was... Yeah. But then again, I, I wasn't... Doing but you, you, like or, you said, you're an explorer too, yeah, I just which I like to gathering. explore also. But I, I wanted to try to get all those what would you call them like tutorial quests done as quick as possible, and that really boosted my level right off the bat. Um, the base building's pretty cool. Like, I what we found out today is since you load basically into a different world every time, we were wondering how that worked and I had to leave the party and log off to do something and uh, I can't was coming back I joined the party my game was loading up and you were like where's uh 
where's your base at? Your base is gone. And then as I loaded in, my stuff started appearing. Yeah, it was, it was pretty neat, actually, because I was going to start building a base right there. And I was like, hmm, I thought this is where his base was at. And then uh, it started loading in. I was like, holy crap. Yeah, and that brought up another question, too. How does it prioritize whose base who's is where? Ba what if you build, yeah, in the exact same spot as someone else and you both happen to be in that same world or server? Which makes me wonder, maybe that's a check they do before they even launch you into a world. It would still make more sense to have a server choice, but then again, this isn't an MMO, like a traditional MMO. Yeah. It's, it's what everyone wanted for a Skyrim game, but got in a Fallout game. But you look at games like, oh, what would be a good example? Uh, I want to say like Daisy or Scum and stuff like that, or even the Battlefield games. No, Even on yeah. console, they have server browsers. Why couldn't Fallout 76 have a server browser or even have an option where you can buy server space to have your own server? Yeah, that, that'd be nice. Um, uh, speaking about buying stuff, uh, another complaint uh, someone was saying was they couldn't buy any type of special armor or do any type of special quest to get certain things and if if you have that pay to win in a game it kind of takes the fun out of it because then you got someone controlling the economy controlling what weapons go where and who gets this and it's just it, it becomes a hassle kind of like when an eso when the, the werewolf uh, quest came out oh god when, yeah when no one wanted to do the werewolf quest because you had to be what, level 30 to do it? Yeah. And then someone started coming in and selling werewolf bites to change you to a werewolf for like 30,000 yeah. gold and whatnot. Or, and if you wanted to be a vampire, there were certain places that, uh, enemies that could, you could contract vampirism from. It was only in certain spots, and you would go to try to farm that spot so you could get that bite and become a vampire, but then other players would be constantly camping that, killing all the those enemies, and then when you would try to go up to farm it, they're like, we won't kill them, or, and we'll let you through yeah. if you pay us this much money or give us this much gold or sept whatever the currency was and, and that like, also goes back to wow uh mages teleporting people around for, yeah. for gold yeah i mean it, it adds another element to the game that really shouldn't be there it helps but then hinders at the same time yeah it's it's one of those things where uh you give me a helping hand i give you a helping hand but in this case it's uh i take your gold and uh, a lot of the times the, the, the games aren't set up for this type of trade. So they can technically take your gold and Yeah, and then decide, run. oh, well, yeah, I'm not do, doing do, it. do I trust this person enough to even give them my gold? Are they really going to yeah. keep their word on what they're going to do? Oh, that also brings me back to uh, Pokemon when we traded. And uh, let's go. Oh, we, yeah. Before we traded, I had... Uh, we we had set up a friend uh, a code and it was Charmander Charmander Charmander, and it loaded me in with some random guy, and uh, I thought it was him, and uh, I traded a Haunter thinking I would get it back as a Gengar. The guy ended up backing out as soon as he got the Gengar. I was like, uh, was that you I just traded with? He's like, no. Yeah, I was like, no, it wasn't me. <laughs> so some guy got my Haunter. I put. Uh, candies into uh, six rare candies it was a level 40 haunter uh, i put some uh stat boost on it and all that stuff so they they kind of robbed me of that so you gotta make sure to choose a unique code while uh trading in pokemon yeah yeah and uh let let's uh let's talk about um let's go pikachu let's go eevee um I hear there are people complaining about it, too. Well, it's not hardcore enough for them. 
I don't know. It's has it ever really been hardcore? Is what I want to know. Uh, I mean, this game has been always geared towards children, right? Yeah, uh, the the idea of it, but there is a competitive scene out there, and um, one of the things that really helped the competitive scene is knowing your status effects, knowing your um, your pokey bodies. Uh, what else was there? Uh, well, like basically, like priority of attacks. And yeah, all that. or what was good against what type. Yeah, but I, I don't know. There, there is that element to it, but you, as when it goes into battling other players, I can see it getting hardcore. But just playing through the game by yourself. You can usually always blast through it in a couple yeah. days. I mean, it, it, they were never really truly that hard. Yeah, and I've watched a video of someone uh, doing a speed run on Pokemon uh, Yellow, and I think he beat it in 27 minutes. And uh, this was on an emulator, so he was able to speed up the uh, the uh, walking and the uh, text and all that. But, yeah, yeah. Well, and I know... Uh, a lot of legit speedrunners who don't use em emulators play the game in Japanese because the characters used to do the text in Japanese is shorter than how we would oh. say it in English. So <laughs> that would give them the edge on getting through the game. Uh, and with uh, Let's Go, you can link it to your... Pokemon Go. Yeah, your, your Go account. So. That's a neat function, I think. I And I was wondering how you can get your Pokemon over from Pokemon Go to Let's Go. And you actually did that yeah, today I did, or yesterday. Yeah, I did that today. Um, I, I played Starlink from 3 till about 7.30 in the morning. And then I switched over to uh, Let's Go. I was like, you know what? I'm going to knock, knock out uh, trading a bunch of Pokemon to my account and see I thought I thought it was going to be super easy super chill I ended up transferring 38 the first time and then about another 10 the second time and what they do is they set in the safari part and you go in and you catch them all over again well I threw 78 balls into catching my Zapdos holy shit 78 balls yes <laughs> I went through all my raspberries it, it's not easy and uh, it, maybe it's because it was a legendary, uh, but what else did I... Or, or in two, uh, what CP was it uh, compared to what you're used to 3, catching? 3,000-something. Oh, my gosh, so yeah. It, it was pretty high up there. Um, and then my Dragonite, uh, I forget how many balls I threw into that, but that, it was a good bit, too. Um yeah, and yeah, I'm using Pokeballs, granted, so it's it's harder to catch them. But um, if you're going to buy Ultra Balls, you're, you're going to go broke. So when when you have that many Pokemon in Safari Park and you want to catch them, just buy the Pokeballs. Because if they run, they stay in the park. They don't go away. you got another chance to catch them. Just walk up to them and try to catch them again. Okay. So you could essentially... Go ahead and just put them all in the, in the yeah. safari zone and then leave it alone. Do whatever yeah. you want to do and come back to them as you want to catch them. I'm not sure how many parks there are, but each park has uh, slots for 50 Pokemon. Okay. And I didn't want to mess up uh, the first box because I put 38 in the first box. So I was like, you know, what? I'll just make a second box or park, however you want to call it. Uh, of the other Pokemon, and that other box was uh, Legendaries and Shinies. Okay. So that that's my hard box. <laughs> I got you, I got you. So you've kind of got a method to how you're separating yeah. them, so you one's know what the, to expect from each box. Yeah, one's to fill my Pokédex, which is all the, the ones I haven't come across in Go yet, so all the uh, beginning stages and all that. So... Well, let's go, not go. My 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 bad. Yeah, the, it's kind of hard to know which one we're talking about. Uh, something that frustrated me that I think you thought was kind of humorous was when 
I couldn't figure out with the joy cons and the motion controls on throwing the, <laughs> the pokeballs. I was like, well, say a Zubat that's flying around like crazy. I couldn't get it down to where when it goes to the side, how I need to move the joy con to throw it in that direction. And, and I didn't even know how I was, I was wondering, how would you even throw a ball in portable mode? And then you showed me, well, watch this. You just aim it and hit A, and it throws the ball. And I was like, are you kidding me? So now when I play Let's Go, I've been playing it in portable mode, so I'm not wasting 20 balls every time I try to catch something that's difficult. Now, to figure that out, I, I did look stupid at first because I was at work, and at work we got a bunch of uh, Let's Go players that bring their Switch. And I'm sitting in the break room, I'm sitting here trying to figure out how to throw this Pokeball. I'm, I'm taking the whole switch and, like, flinging it forward. And I, I just look like a moron <laughs> sitting here oh, trying shit. to catch this Pokemon. I was like, why isn't it going? Why? And then I guess I hit A when I was uh, flinging the switch. And next you're thing like, I what know, did I do? What did yep, I just press? <laughs> yep. That's exactly what happened. But for a good 15 minutes, I must have looked like a moron. Yes, it took me that long to figure it out. Don't judge me. So... With all this, do you think that with the release of Let's Go, that Pokemon Go, is this going to bring more players back? Or do you think this is going to cause Pokemon Go to die out even more than it already is? Well, to be honest, for me, I think it would die because I've already quit Go. Uh, I've dumped nearly all my good Pokemon into Let's Go. And I don't even care about my Go account anymore. Yeah, see, and that's... I think for me, it's going to make it die, too. The only thing I can think of is if there are players who were never into Go that much to begin with, if they really get into Let's Go and say, you know how every month there's a legend... Like they did the three legendary yeah. birds one month after another. Maybe... It'll bring them in just to play to get those challenges done so they can get their legendary for that month and then transfer it into Let's Go. So in some ways it might bring a few more players, but I'm with you. I think all in all Pokemon Go is going to die out. Just kind of like, uh, what was it, Mario Run, the mobile yeah. game Nintendo made where everybody was hyped about that. It did even better than Pokemon Go when it first released. And then within a week, nobody was playing it. <laughs> yeah. Well, everyone's complaint was there wasn't enough maps. Uh, there, it wasn't challenging enough. It was just the same thing over and over. But if you look at any game, there's going to be a rinse and repeat portion of the game. Whether it's a fighting game, uh, I guess a running game like Mario Run. Hell, even, R even RPGs, you got fetch quests constantly, yeah. you know. And... And when you look at a mobile game, I don't see a mo. I can see mobile is more popular with casual gamers because everybody has a smartphone. Everybody can do it. But for me, it's just a time killer. Like when you're uh, sitting in, say you're sitting in the doctor's office and you're waiting to see the doctor, pull out your phone, play a game for a little bit. You know, I don't see it's something that you're going to sit and put all this time into, which is why, for example, you know, Konami, mm -hmm. they're supposedly wanting to focus on mobile gaming and stuff like that. And that's that's why, you know, all that big hubbub with Kojima, Hideo Kojima leaving the company because of that and stuff, because they're going to focus more on that, which I don't know. I, I'm still the guy that likes to sit and wait for those triple a single player games i mean don't get me wrong i love multiplayer games but like i said i've got a kid so it's hard for me like when i was playing fallout 76 with you today something happens with my son and it's like okay hold on i'll be right back i gotta go do this do that you know and if you're playing a competitive game online, say you're playing a first-person shooter, I can't, I don't know, I can't constantly be watching my son and doing this. I have to have time to myself. 
And with the single player game, I can pause it and do what I want. And I, I like I like getting into stories and and stuff like that. That's like Hideo Kojima's making. Have you seen anything on Death Stranding? No, not yet. His his new game he's making with his new studio. It's uh uh, Norman Reedus actually voices the main character in it, and it looks pretty wild, but I'm excited to sit and play that game because anything out of that guy's mind is usually usually really weird and really awesome. Uh, but I don't know. I, I, I'll play either. I, I'm, I'm just saying I don't think single player's dead. I don't... I don't think everybody's going to mobile. We've they've got us diehards. It's just when it st it stinks when games like Candy Crush on mobile can make so much money, or Clash of Clans can make so much money that it makes developers want to start focusing on that because it can make that much money. Or even you'll go into like even free to play games like. Fortnite, look how much money Fortnite's making, and you it's a free to play game. Yeah, but you, again with Fortnite, that's it, it's more of a fast paced game for the newer generation of gamers, and uh, you don't need you don't need to concentrate or focus on story. Uh, it's more of a kind of fast paced run and gun type of game. Yeah, where us uh, older gentlemen. And ladies uh, come from a, a, a era of story-based gaming. Yeah, um, it, it's that story that drew us into it. Why? Why are we continuing this? Why? Even though it's the same gameplay over and over, it's a different story. It's exactly. What, we waited all this time for part two because we wanted the next segment of the story. We didn't care if it's the same gameplay. Well, and I think another thing that example that can show us how single players not dead is look at red dead redemption 2 <laughs> yeah i mean look how much I, that's in the first few days i think it made more money than the first red dead made since its launch so and that's they don't have their multiplayer for it isn't even released yet i think they're doing the gta 5 treatment where on gta 5 they had GTA on online planned and in the works, but it didn't come out until weeks after the game actually launched. Yeah, and that's one of the complaints I'm hearing. People are worried that it's going to be like GTA Online, where it's a pay to win. Yeah. So, real cash will give you all these awesome weapons and gear, and next thing you know, you're just going to get robbed by another player. I and I'll I'll admit I have spent way too much money on GTA Five because. They'll release this awesome vehicle, and I'm like, well, I guess I, I gotta get it. <laughs> I want that vehicle so bad that I'm not gonna sit there and grind heists and stuff for days just to buy it. So I'll just get a shark card and pay for it like that. Well, then I buy it. Oh, but I don't now. I don't have enough money to customize it and put all the cool uh, yep. gear into it. Pay so, to win. So I'll pay again, and it's like I, I think that's. Uh, like a leech on gaming. I think that's something that we need to get away from, or developers need to get away from. Yeah, the micro purchases. It's uh, you know, I believe South Park did a bit on that, uh, where uh, Stan was addicted to a mobile game with micro purchases and. Yeah. yeah or it, there was one too. Where it was like Farmville. You just just go on and and like my farm and check out my farm and yeah. all that stuff. <laughs> Uh, what else was there? Oh, uh, Guitar Hero. Oh, yeah. The, yeah. the heroin addict, uh, <laughs> or yeah. heroin junkie, chase yeah. the dragon, shoot or, up the heroin. You, you, you never get the dragon. <laughs> that, yeah. I, I don't know, back to Red Dead, though. I'm, I'm having a lot of fun with it. People are, a lot of people are complaining about it, too. Uh, especially, like, the bounty system, how... They're like, oh, I just bumped into somebody, and all of a sudden the law yeah. is shooting at me, and it's like, well, the the bounty and law system in Red Dead is so in depth, where if you are an asshole, you're going to always get treated like an <laughs> asshole. If you have high bounties in every territory, and 
you always are robbing people and shit. That's what's going to happen. But if you pay off, I pay off my bounties. I help people when I can. I donate to my camp to upgrade it and uh, get them restock the food and stuff like that. I never have those problems. So if you play it like it's meant to be played, you're not going to run into that. Or and it, and it can be meant to be played where you're just a gunslinger outlaw killing everybody you want. But there are it's there are going to be consequences to that. Yep. But I don't know. I I've thoroughly enjoyed uh uh Red Dead Redemption 2. Uh we just did our uh actually it's probably done rendering now our uh first episode of Starlink that uh, we played tonight. What what are your thoughts on Starlink? Uh, I like it. Like I said, I played from 3 in the morning until about 7.30, and I'm the type of person to explore, so when I first, I haven't done very many missions for it, I just kind of went around, my inventory is full actually, and I can't figure out how to dump my inventory, and it is bugging me because I just want to go out and explore more and find more stuff to collect, and but I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Yeah, I, I, you can see in our our gameplay, I kind of got a little frustrated at first because of I I'm not a fan of the controls with the the ship dock with the Joy Cons in it. It feels awkward in my hands. I I'm not a fan of the Joy Cons to begin with. I have a pro controller, so on oh, no, on my next episode, I'm going to use that pro controller. See if I do a little better. Now, what well, we've been talking about, what we're worried about, is pay to win games. Does it look like Starlink is going to be one of those games? Uh, there there are some weapon packs, and um, the starter kit comes with uh, your your digital ship plus if you get the switch version, uh, the Star Fox ship. Yeah. So, you're getting two ships um, out of the box, and uh, three pilots or two? I forget. Two pilots, right? Yeah, you get Star Fox and that uh, main pilot, whatever his name yeah, is. Yeah, that, that young kid. Um, yeah, I don't remember his name either. But uh, you, you, get, you get that, and from what I can see, you can probably play the whole game with the same weapon set. It's just not going to be as easy. But uh, if you really didn't want to dump money into it, you don't have to. Yeah, and something we tested after our uh, our Let's Play was you have your ship, the Lance, is, that's what it's called, right? Yeah, the Lance. And you had the black hole gun on it, and I put it onto mine to see if it was linked to your game specifically or if I could use it too and I could use it and when I removed it it kept it in my collection so you can trade back and forth with buddies that have the game and still not have to spend all that money yeah so it it's one of those um, sit around and play with a buddy type of game because we noticed uh, during the let's play video in the top right corner, it said press A or plus to join. So we're assuming it's multiplayer. Yeah, and I think what I was reading on was the multiplayer is split screen, which, I mean, obviously, if you're on the same console, it would have to be split screen. What I would like to see, though, is a system link, since switches can be are mobile they can be mobile why couldn't you do a proximity play where you're playing on separate screens because you know uh, split yeah. screen is never all that fun to play on yeah i remember my days of halo uh back before uh we had uh, any type of uh <laughs> land party we did the device we we invented the <laughs> device it was a cardboard <laughs> box taped to our tv screen with uh, four segments in it to box off each segment. So nobody would screen peek on no you? No screen peeking, and it was all about who was the best player. Oh, man. Yep, those were the days. Uh, yeah, we patented that, that thing. Not really, but it was really ghetto and duct tape and box. Uh, <laughs> a box. It, it worked. Whatever you have to do. Uh, I, 
we never th thought of that when I used to play Goldeneye as a kid. We never thought about doing that. But then we also had rules, too, about being Jaws and Odd Job. You couldn't yep. be tall or short <laughs> players. Everybody had to be the average height characters because <laughs> there would be advantages and disadvantages. Uh, yeah. Going back to, we were talking about Fortnite, uh, Battle Royale games. Do you play, do you play many Battle Royale games? Uh, not, not anymore. Uh, what, when it comes to that, like, uh, the uh, arena for Destiny and all that, um, uh, I'm, I'm not into it. I don't even know what it's called anymore. Uh, uh Crucible? Crucible. I, I played it a little bit. Uh, it's just, I guess it's too fast paced for me. I, I can't keep up with it. Yeah, and I... And I'm talking to Battle Royale, like, 100 players in a match. Oh, the, gotcha. It shrinks down, and you yeah, gotcha. have to be the last one standing. So, Fortnite type. Fortnite yeah. or PUBG. Now, PUBG, I do I do like PUBG. I ain't gonna lie about that one. Uh, what you got, got me on to that was uh, the fact that it's more modern tech than, you know... Than... It, the cartoony it, Fortnite yeah. look. It, 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 it's more appealing to me. Yeah, I... I... I don't like Fortnite because it's so fast-paced and the building aspect of it to where before I can get a shot off, it seems like someone can build a skyscraper. And I'm just like, oh, screw this. I'm not that good and I'll never be that good. So it kind of turns me off. And... The community, the Fortnite community, is extremely toxic. <laughs> it is the, there's there's, there's the a lot of douchebags in there. <laughs> uh, and PUBG, I like PUBG a lot, but something I don't like about it is it's too slow paced to the point to where it seems like half of a match, I'm just waiting out in the house or hiding out in yeah, the bush. Yeah, you're sneaking. Waiting for it to shrink down so I can move up. And I don't know. I I found one on PC called uh, Ring of Elysium. I, I believe is what it's that. called. It, it is fun. You you start off, It's the, the map is you're on this mountain and it's snow covered and instead of dropping in, like parachuting in or gliding in or anything like that, you actually, the map is laid out in a grid with a bunch of little squares all over the place. And you click on a square and that square lights up and that's your square and that's where you're going to spawn. You can't spawn in somebody else's square, but that gives you the option to where do I want to try to spawn by myself so I can get all this loot, meet up with people later and take them out? Or do I want to find a heavily populated area, go in guns blazing? And what's yeah. cool about it too is you can start, you start, you got three different classes. One is a snowboarding class where... That would be someone's favorite. Yeah, you can pull out a snowboard and snowboard to different places and it starts with... A pistol and then they have a hang glider class that also has a pistol and you uh, can jump off the side of a ledge and hang glide to another area and then you have a ice climbing class where you can climb certain walls with uh, climbing axes and that starts off with a shotgun so Something good is you always start off with a gun. Other cool thing is how the map shrinks. It's not a symmetrical bubble. It's an actual winter storm moving in on different sides. If you're in it, you freeze to death. By the end of the match, a helicopter comes in and there's only four seats to get in. So if you're playing squad mode, it's you and your three other teammates. If you're playing duos or by yourself, it's you. You've got even if you're not the first one in the helicopter, you still have a chance if there's a seat left. But you also have to think about too. You have to climb a ladder to get into that helicopter. So 
So a lot of people hide out, wait for you to start climbing that ladder, and then take you out. I, uh, um, and once it gets to the very end of the game and the helicopter's about to take off, it says in however many seconds, all players on the map will be revealed on the radar. So then it's just a free for all and everybody's trying to get to the copter. I don't know. It's, it's really fun to me. So I'm going to have to download it and, uh, we'll give it a shot. Me and, uh, me and my, one of my other buddies have been playing it and we're really enjoying it. Yeah. It sounds like a lot of fun, but when you said the helicopter and the ladder thing, uh, it sounds like, uh, Friday the 13th all over again. Uh, you got people teaming up with Jason in that game and it, it just makes it hard on you. And uh, it, it's really, it makes the game unenjoyable when you got someone sitting there just trying to make you lose constantly. Yeah, I'm pretty much just trolling the entire match. Yep. I, that's why when it comes to a game like, games like that, I prefer the, like, Dead by Daylight. They did a really good job on that one. Uh, I think what really started those type of, what, really started that type of game was evolve yeah where there's a bunch of people working against one beast or one enemy uh that's also a human player uh that was that's pretty fun uh i've been i also tried out a blackout which is uh the new call of duties battle royale mode and it's enjoyable it's uh you know not as fast paced as it's still pretty fast paced but it's not like Fortnite, and it's not as slow as PUBG. it's pretty fun and the zombie mode i always like the zombie modes in those zombies games. is good in that one but all in all i think call of duty's dead what do you what do you think uh pretty much uh, i the last time i played was infinite warfare and um that was because I got tired of spawn camping, and I, I just I couldn't handle it no more. People are such douchebags in that game. Yeah, that's pretty that, toxic too. And then you got the noob tubers, or yeah. like I remember there were people that could figure out the exact location in certain maps where when a match started they could throw a throwing knife up into yep. the air and kill you in the first three seconds. And not to mention all the glitch horrors. They go into the glitches and just hide and camp out yep. where they can shoot out you can't shoot in yep. i don't know in my opinion the last good call of duty was modern warfare 2 yeah uh now i like the story of modern warfare 3 and i think what was that game mode call where you uh survived survival or something yeah that was actually pretty good i like that i um, I don't know. It's been Call of Duty's been slowly declining over the years. I think it's already hit its peak and it's on its way down. They really need to, something really needs to happen. Something new. They got to bring something into it to make it popular again. Who I, knows? Maybe they'll do a space Call of Duty. Yeah. <laughs> or uh. Hell, there's even been some space-type missions in some of the other Call of Duties. I can't remember which one it was where you're actually on a space station floating through space shooting people. Uh, Ghost? Well, yeah, it was Ghost, was Ghost, it? Ghost, uh, Loki, and uh, Odin, uh, the, the, the rod machines and yeah, space. Oh, yeah. God. That I rem I d okay, I do remember yeah, that. that. That one, I, I do like the multiplayer in that one. Um, the... The way you can set up your weapons, your perks, um, it, it was just an all-around... The, the story was kind of weird. I, I wasn't a fan of the story, but at least there was a story and um, all that. But, yeah, I was a fan of the multiplayer in that one a lot. And the zombies was fun in that one, too. It, it was called Infected, not Zombies. Yeah, yeah. And then... No, what was... I thought Ghosts had... Extinction. It, it does. It's another... Uh, Which was the... Uh, it's the aliens. aliens. Uh, there's like 13 or 15 hives you have to destroy. And me and two other buddies went through and we got to like the 11th hive and we, we didn't play it no more after that. But 
we were so close to the end, and we we just stopped playing. It's just like I will never do that good again. <laughs> yeah, it, it it takes a lot of work, and uh, as long as you have a system down, it, it's pretty easy. But towards the end, it just gets hectic, and we're like, yeah, it, it took us all day to get here. Let's let's just stop. Uh, it kind of puts me back at uh, zombies and Call of Duty, all the waves you go through. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, I forget what the world record was for the highest wave in uh, Black Ops 3. Wasn't it like two something? Uh, I have no idea. 36 hours of gameplay. I was like, good God. I, I don't know if I can sit there and do that. I mean, I, I have a job. I have a life to commit to. <laughs> yeah. I just, and I know a guy I work with was telling me that there are so many Easter eggs in. Uh, uh, the Treyarch zombie game, because uh, you know they switch developers every other year. Like there's Infinity Ward, Treyarch, and yep. uh, there's a new one, Sledgehammer or something like that. I think it is Sledgehammer. Uh, but the Treyarch ones, zombie modes, have so many intricate Easter eggs, and there's actually stories and plots behind all these zombie yep. modes. And he was telling me about one of the developers was doing an interview and while he was doing the interview people noticed he was blinking funny and someone figured out he was blinking clues to an easter egg or something in morse code oh yeah and that is it's so cool like how do you even do that that is so in depth uh that that brings me back to that one demo that launched with Nor Norman Reedus. Uh, oh, uh, the name PT. Of... Yeah. How do people figure that crap that out? That was, that, I will still say to this day, that is the scariest thing I've ever played. It that was, was hard. awesome. It was, and uh, everyone was so disappointed when that didn't become a thing. Well, and that, that goes back to the whole uh, Konami thing, because... Hideo yeah. Kojima was working on that. That was to be the new Silent Hill game. Yep. And then that went under, and now that's not happening. And that's why now he's using Norman Reedus for this Death Stranding game, which is a completely different game. But it still looks cool. <coughs> I'm still excited to play it. Are there, are there any upcoming games that you're looking forward to? Smash. Oh, Smash! I almost pre-ordered it during Black Friday, and then I was like, eee, I might wait a little bit longer, save my money. There might be some uh, Cyber Monday uh, Cyber Monday deals going on. So The big deal about that is they haven't announced, or they, they haven't announced that Waluigi's going to be in it. Everybody's mad that there's not going to be Waluigi. Well, I think he's going to be an Echo Fighter for uh, regular... Luigi. Oh, you think so? I think so. That, in my opinion, because look at all the other Echo Fighters. You got Ken for Ryu as an Echo Fighter. Okay, yeah. So it, it, it's he's gonna be there. They but, they can't not have him. So. Yeah, that that makes because wasn't he usually? A, didn't one of them have it where he was a trophy? One of the trophy fight where you throw. Throw the trophy and a, a character fights for you for a second. Uh, Was he ever one of those? I don't remember, but uh, you bringing that up just re reminded me about the, uh, uh, the... They're not... Remember in the other Smash, you got trophies. The one on 3DS and Wii U. Yeah. They're not doing a trophy thing. Um, now it's a... Uh, I forget what they called it. Uh... Uh, like a a shard or something like that. Okay. Another, another character, which you put these shards or whatever they're called into like a buff for your current character you're using. Oh. It gives uh, them like stat boost or certain effects and stuff like that. That adds a whole new element to it, it. It really does. And I forget what they're called, so don't quote me on shard. It might be... Well, but but the, the mechanic itself, yeah, yeah, that that is that is interesting. I know when they they teased it announcing a new character entering the battle, 
and it was uh, the piranha plant. Oh yeah, and everybody's was like, so mad about yeah, that. Yeah, you're gonna. Everybody's like, you're gonna add the piranha plant, but not Waluigi. Oh my god, everybody's just getting so tilted over that. Oh, that's funny though. I, I don't know. Most of the games that I have been amped for are actually already out. Uh, I know, like. Darksiders 3 has been announced and they're working on it. Uh, I never really got into the Darksiders game, so I'm not sure how good that's going to be. Battlefield 5's coming out um, soon. I, I, I enjoy Battlefield more than I ever enjoyed Call of Duty, but I, I don't know. I'm kind of getting burned out on shooters unless it's Halo. Because I've always yeah. loved Halo. And Halo is Halo Infinity is getting in development now, but that's quite a ways off. Uh, well, it seems like games go through phases, too. Like, uh, back during PS2, Xbox 360, it was all about the racing games. Like, everyone was oh, a racing yeah. game constantly. Well, I but, think Gran Turismo started that. Yeah. When we were playing Gran Turismo and on the PlayStation. The, the open world... Uh, Racing game, what was it? Burnout Paradise. Oh, and... Paradise, yeah. I played I've played Burnout since the original one. Yeah. I had Burnout on the uh, was it the GameCube it I was had the it on? GameCube and they but they I had it on PS two and Xbox also, I think, but I had the GameCube version of it. What really drew me into Burnout were the crash physics. They yep. they for the time they looked extremely realistic. Uh I think either it is about to launch. I don't know. I've seen Let's Players playing it. I don't know if they have had early copies or it's out yet, but the new Hitman is... I don't know if it's been released, but I've seen gameplay of it, and it looks pretty cool. I have I was into the Hitman games when I was younger, but one that I'm really... Well, there's two games that I'm really looking forward to, and one of them's Anthem. Ever since the E3 presentation of Anthem, I was like, that is basically looks like you're a co-op game where you can fly around and kick ass like Iron Man. And I thought that was really neat looking. That and, did you ever play The Last of Us? Uh, I actually played a little bit of it, not very much. Uh, at the time, I was a hardcore uh, Xbox fanatic, so oh, okay. I didn't own any PlayStation product, so... Uh, yeah. I, I I was always Xbox over PlayStation, uh, and my reason was mainly because of the controller. I yeah. don't like the PlayStation controllers Mine was Halo. Well, yeah, Halo. Mine was Halo. And, um, well, I just, on Black Friday, picked up The Last of Us Remastered for PS4 for six bucks. That is worth... Oh, that is so... I. So it's in the works to be played through. It is an amazing game. It's made by Naughty Dog, the same people who make yeah. the Uncharted games. Oh, and I love Uncharted. Yeah, like, it is. I, back before I even owned a PlayStation, I watched my brothers play, and I even uh, did multiplayer with them, and uh, I guess it was Uncharted 3. Oh, that was... And I, coming from so the first far, that was my hated favorite PlayStation one. products back then, I, I played the shit out of that with my brothers, so... Oh, Uncharted was awesome. Uh, I played uh, I played the shit out of those. The Last of Us, I played The Last of Us 2. Looks awesome. From what they've released so far, it looks like you're playing as Ellie, and she's uh, grown up now. There's no real mention of Joel. I'm not sure if he's going to be in it or not. We'll just have to see. Uh, the Last of Us, Anthem, yeah, I, both of those I'm really excited for. Crackdown 3 is another one that's coming out. Did you ever... Really? Yeah. They, they, that's like, been in development hell for a while, but it's... Well, Crackdown 1 was such a big hit, and 2 kind of was... Eh. Yeah, it kind of petered out, but yeah. 3, it's... I guess, I don't know, all the advertising is around Terry Crews, because he's supposedly voicing the guy really? you're playing, I think. I don't hmm. know, but... Everybody thought it was going to be canceled for a while because it keeps get pushed and pushed and pushed. But 
I don't know. Supposedly it's coming out. We'll see if that's uh, that's any good. That kind of reminds me of like Resident Evil Two uh, coming out. Oh, the remaster. Yeah. I, I, I'll. It, that cap getting pushed off or uh, the it just they had all this hype and then you didn't hear about it for a while and then it kind of died off. Now it, it, everyone's talking about it again. And for me, it, it's been so long that they're they're just they're playing with my emotions and I'm tired of it. So I'll I'll wait to actually see it, and I'm afraid they might have butchered the old school game. Yeah, we'll we'll have to see. I as long as I loved the original, but I hope if they keep it true to the original, I hope they keep it true to the original up to the point of it being like. Things being in the same places as you remember it, you know, bringing yeah. back all these old memories. But I hope they update it control-wise. I do not want to play tank controls. You know yeah. what I mean? Where it's like up is always forward and you have to stop and turn and yeah. then push up to go forward. I want it to be current current control scheme. Not, not necessarily first person like... Resident Evil 7 was, but maybe like uh, how Resident Evil 4 did the over the shoulder yeah. third person, and I guess they did it with 5 and 6 also. Yeah, and you, I'm not sure if Resident control the camera too, if I remember correctly, in one of them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And yeah. I, would, I heard that they're supposed to be redoing the camera angles and uh, stuff like that, but. From what I've seen in the trailers is uh, Leon and Clara. They don't really look like they're old school characters, which that's why I'm afraid this game's going to be butchered. You don't uh, yeah. you don't recognize their face. Uh, you recognize their clothing, but not their face. Kind of like what they did to their Jill voices. in Resident Evil Five when you yeah. Jill was controlled by something and you had to fight her. And I was like, I didn't that's even know Jill. it was Jill. Yeah, I was like, that doesn't look like Jill at all. But then again, she was being controlled, so... Yeah, but kinda. wasn't she blonde? Yeah. And in Resident Evil 3, she was had black hair, didn't she? I thought it was brown or... Or dark brown, brown. yeah. And then brown or she black. was like a dirty blonde in that. And I was like... So I was like, who is this woman I'm fighting? Oh, that's Jill. I didn't even know it was Jill. Uh, but anyway, I don't know. You were talk still pretty good. Yeah. You were talking about the Crucible earlier in destiny which got me uh thinking about destiny 2 the forsaken dlc has been out for a while now and i finally got got around to playing it uh, a few days ago and it's actually pretty good they've really done well with the story and i like some of the new mechanics in it i'm not going to get too much into it though but it was pretty good for the price i paid i didn't pay full price so oh really yeah it it, it's the same game. Uh, they really didn't need to make a part two. They could have just, you know, made another, uh, like an expansion. expansion. Yeah. It, for them to redo the whole game, it, and it kind of throws off the timeline a little bit. The uh, story. It's uh, uh, your character seems to not know anything about the Forsaken at all, and yeah. it's like, wait. Forsaken's been on Earth before. Shouldn't I know from... Yeah, and it... I it don't just, know. It throws off the timeline. Like, when is this happening? It, is this something from the past or from the future? What, what's going on? Yeah, and then, and then, uh, and then it, it brings the Reef and the, the Prince older and the Queen back into it. Yeah. I don't know. It's, uh, it's fun, though. I, I do like the new game mode Gambit. That they oh put yeah, into the gambit it. is awesome. Uh, that's probably the best part about uh, Destiny Two. I did like the uh, the the little mini dungeons they have where you can get the loot. Yeah. The uh, like it gives it more of a free roam aspect to it. Yeah. Where it's not go here, do that. You have little explore areas where you can go. Yeah, and find it, loot. it doesn't really hold your hand as much as it yeah. used to. I uh, I recently, or actually just last night, me and a buddy beat a game called The Forest, 
and that game blew me away. It's a survival horror type game where you're on this peninsula, uh, you, your plane crashes on this peninsula, and your son gets taken by this mysterious guy uh, that's covered in red. I don't know if it, it looks like red paint or blood, and he takes your son off, and then there are cannibals all over this island and these weird beasts that will attack every once in a while. And basically it's, it's kind of like a, the same format as seven days to die, or even you can say Minecraft where you have to build a shelter before the cannibals come at night because they're more active at night and all this stuff. And, but Somewhere in there is a story, and I love games that do this, where they don't tell you the story whatsoever, but through finding diaries, finding audio tapes, mm-hmm. uh, and all this stuff, there is so much lore. And after I beat the game, I and I was like, wow, this is what was happening on this island this whole time. I had no idea. And then I looked up a story explanation and went into the lore. And there was just pages and pages of stuff that you could almost make a novel out of. And I was like, and they don't even tell you any of this unless you actually dig for it and find yeah. it. I was very, very impressed with that. Yeah, uh, talking about no story just reminded me of... Uh... Fallout 4, or not Fallout 4, uh, 76, one of the complaints uh, is that the story, there, yeah. is no, there is no real story there, the lack of story. Well, if you uh, go exploring like I did, uh, you'll come across like little notes and stuff where uh, there are survivor notes. Uh, I found a guy in a refrigerator, and uh, he gave me a location to his buried stash, and... Uh, it was just an audio tape, but the point being is that there's there's story there. You just have to find it. Yeah, and well, they're not gonna hold your hand and you know. But look at people you nowadays. How many people even read books anymore? Nobody likes to read, so these casual gamers are getting this game, and and they're like, oh. I, you're telling me a guy's not going to sit here and just tell me what's going on? I have to read this terminal? Because most people just mash the button yeah. through all the text in the terminals and don't even read it. So it's like, just take take your time and read it. And you'll, yeah, you'll, you'll enjoy it a lot more. Uh, that also goes back to uh, gamers nowadays compared to old gamers. Uh, they're more, <laughs> I guess, they're wanting it easier. Where, back in the day, there was games that took weeks to beat, months, yeah, years. Yeah, and we wanted, we wanted a challenge. And uh, now it's just like, you beat a game in two, three hours, and then what do you do after that? Replay the game, beat it again, but... What? Yeah, New Game Plus, New Game Plus. It's like, man, what happened to... Like, I like stuff where... It's been five years later, and someone found something new. Yeah. And they're posting it online, going, "Look what I just found!" Nobody even knew it was in the game. I I, I don't know. It's the the climate of gaming is definitely changing, and I'm not sure if I like it. And, and it may because I may I may sound like a bitter old fuck, but I am a bitter <laughs> old fuck. So <laughs> I don't know. It's just like I sound like those old men. What are what these new kids? And their their hip hop music, you know. <laughs> I don't know. It's just it's just changing. I I'm just glad there are still develop developers that are catering to the games, game play and game types that I'm used was used the, to. The era was we're used to. <laughs> yeah, well, and I mean like, look at the Dark Souls and Bloodborne series. Yeah. Like it's not the most popular, but it has this huge cult following because of people like us <laughs> that want that challenge yep um but oh wow we've been going for about an hour and five minutes i think this has been a pretty successful podcast uh i think it's time to go ahead and wrap it up uh you have anything to say to the uh 
the listeners. Uh, well, closing thoughts on a few of the games. Uh, Pokemon, uh, forgot to mention, uh, the Pokebodies, they don't seem to be there. Uh, like Pikachu had static when you did a physical attack to him, you would get, uh, paralyzed and, um, they're, they're not there. So I, I can kind of get where people are saying the game's dumbed down, but then again, it was meant to be a casual game to reintroduce the, uh, old school players and, uh, upcoming new players. Yeah. Some, something easy. Um, uh, and, uh. Pretty much is about it. Yeah, I uh, all pretty much most of the games we've talked about, I think, all have something about them that is worth playing. Um, remember that whether a game's good or not, you got to think about there are developers that have poured their heart and soul into these games, so don't try to shit on them too hard if you don't like it don't play it it's as simple as that yep. you don't have to belittle somebody for playing a game that they like just because you don't like it and it wasn't what you expected it's everybody has their own flavor let them like what they like and everybody will be happy but on that note um let's go ahead and get this done and uh we will, hopefully we can try to do a podcast weekly. I think that's a good goal to have, a weekly podcast. Yeah, um, um, probably start a schedule or something. That yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens and maybe we can get some more guests on here. But until then, spread the word, you frickin' turds. We'll see you later. <laughs>